Yo, what is going on everybody? Shri Kanasa here. So how to optimize Google shopping campaigns in 2021 and onwards. Now, a few months ago, I actually had already released a video on how to optimize shopping campaigns the proper way. However, in 2021 and onwards, I've started doing the things a little bit differently and it's best that I teach you guys all these things as well. So before we actually jump right into this video, I want you to do one thing. Take just two quick seconds to destroy that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm so that I can put out more videos just like these ones and let's just get right into it without wasting any more time. So how to properly optimize shopping campaigns. The best way for me to actually show it to you is actually to go in and really optimize my Google shopping campaign. And we're going to be optimizing this Google shopping campaign right here. It is actually a general testing campaign. If you guys don't know what a general testing campaign is, you can watch some of my previous videos I released on setting up these general testing campaigns or you guys can get the Google Ads Mastery course which I have just released the link will be in the description down below it is a full-on course which goes over exactly how to set up set up campaigns like I have set them up here how to get the same kind of results I do how to do over seven figures every single year with your e-commerce store again the link for the Google Ads Mastery course will be in the description below but let's go ahead and do some campaign optimization we're gonna be going inside this general testing campaign right here and if we go inside the product Product section we're gonna be looking at a few days worth of data specifically this entire month and I'm recording this video on this 22nd of August but we're gonna look at the entire data for this month to see exactly how things have been going so as you guys can see right here changing the times weekly the ROAS and all of that stuff has been sort of fluctuating during this time period of course these numbers are not fully accurate simply because of the difference in the Google's tracking algorithm and also some missed sales here and there but overall things are starting to go back up with the change of the season now middle of august especially the beginning is usually the slowest time period for e-commerce simply because most people are just enjoying their final days of summer they're outdoors out and about not really spending any time indoors trying to shop online and so forth so because of that usually this time period is very slow however later on after more towards the end of the August, early September, things really start to pick up. The ROI starts to go back up. But how do you go in and how do you properly optimize a Google shopping campaign? Now, we're going to be dividing this optimization in, into a set of two different steps. Step number one is optimizing the product. This is where we actually go in and begin with the product optimization. And we start looking at the data the products are giving us before actually deciding whether to go in and whether to exclude a certain product, whether to increase the bid and so forth, depending on what kind of campaign you currently have going on so that's exactly what we're going to be doing with the, this google shopping campaign as well the first thing i like to do is set up a few filters and these are the following filters the first filter is product status ready to serve this lets you only see those products which are currently not already excluded within your campaign saves you really a lot of time with all of the scrolling just to go over all of the excluded ones second one is impression greater than 500 we do not want to be looking at products with impressions less than 500 simply because that is just not enough impressions to be deciding any kinds of actions on a given product you need to really let it run let it optimize and let it get enough data so that you can go in and look at the correct product because again anything less than 500 and there's just not enough eyeballs going on that product as of yet in order to make any kind of accurate judgment so once you have set up those two filters then we start by ranking by the most cost here initially all we're trying to do is we're trying to see which product spent the most money profitably and which product got you the sales profitably and for the time period actually i like to look at about seven days to eight days worth of data including today or this month's worth of data depending on what my budget is of course if your budget is very high right now this campaign is running at a 330 dollars a day budget every single day it's going to be spending a lot of money you don't really need to be looking at 30 days worth of data or so so if you're just starting out i recommend looking at this month's worth of data or last 30 days if you are at a mediocre budget meaning 50 100 150 dollars even look at last 14 days worth of data finally anything above 250 300 and above look at about last seven days to eight days worth of data so we're going to do exactly that because with google ads it takes about 7 to 14 days for it to even accurately record all of the conversions and 
associate them with the appropriate product. So just because of that, we might want to change it to seven to eight days, maybe sometimes even 14 days. So let's do just that. So once you have set up those filters, now we start looking at the products, trying to identify which products basically got you the sales, which did not get you the sales and so forth. And you want to be looking at the overall cost. Basically, you can only spend up to 1.5 times to two times your profit margins without a sale. So for instance, let's say for example, this product right here, I get, I sell this for $140 approximately. And let's say I get this for $100. So my profit margin is 40. That means I need to be getting sales at about $60 to $80. If I have spent over 60 to $80 and I have gotten zero sales for this product, that simply means that this product has gone over the profit margins. I now need to exclude this product. That also means that every 40 to $60 spent, I need to be getting one single sale. So if we look at this right now, we can see that I've gotten roughly five sales at $115 spend. That is a very good number because that is below our profit margin. So obviously we would not be excluding this. However, let's say for example, this product right here, $4,700 that I'm selling you for, but let's just say that $60 is the, my profit margin for this product and it already crossed $60. That means I'll let it run for maybe about $20 to $40. Again, 1.5 times to two times my profit margins before deciding to exclude that product. So that is exactly what I do. First rank by the most cost and I go one by one through all of my items right over here and make a list of all of the item IDs which are not matching this criteria which I need to get rid of right away because simply put, those products are wasting my money. Instead of my campaign spending money on the right products, it is spending money on those products which are, again, not profitable, not showing any types of results. I would rather divert my budget from those products, the bad products, to the good products which are actually getting me sales and so forth. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through my list really quick and make up a list just for you guys of all of the item IDs that I need to exclude before we move on to the next step. All right, so what I did is I went ahead, went through my list one by one and looking at the same exact data which I just mentioned, I went ahead and created a list of a few item IDs which I personally need to exclude right away simply because they're not matching our main criteria of selling within one point five to two times our profit margin. So these are going over our profit margins. They are not profitable for us at all. In that case, we will need to go in and exclude those products. So once we have done that, we move on to phase two of step number one, and that is ranking by lowest CTR to highest, because now we want to be looking at all of those products which have a less than 0.10 to 0.15% CTR, because we want to exclude those products immediately. They're not profitable for us. They're not getting us the desired clicks. And what this is doing is because these products have a very, very low CTR, they're bringing our entire campaign CTR down to below 1%. And as I've always mentioned in my YouTube videos, if you want to have a good quality score, you need to number one, have a good bid or number two, have a very high CTR. Obviously with us, we're drop shippers. We want to bid as low as possible so that we can get enough profit to continue our business. But that also means that we need to focus on number two, and that is having a very high CTR. With Google Ads, again, all of these products contribute to your campaign's overall CTR. If it is less than 1% in any way, then it is just going to damage your campaign and you're going to have a very low quality score so in order to avoid that we need to get rid of all the products which have less than 0.10 percent to 0.15 percent ctr now this actually really applies to you if that product with 0.10 percent to 0.15 percent ctr or below has gotten you zero sales because if it is actually getting you sales at that low ctr you want to leave it running because you don't want to mess with what's already working you only want to mess with what's not getting results basically so getting rid of those products with very low CTRs is extremely important, especially those with zero clicks and above 500 impressions. Like these ones, for example, these are definitely those that I avoid at all costs. And I don't want to run within my campaign because they are really damaging the campaign's overall CTR. So I'm going to repeat the same exact steps, go inside the campaign and actually start by recording all of the products, which I then again need to exclude, which match our current criteria of less than 0.10% to 0.15% CTR without a sale. Now, a special note in this case, however, there are some products like these ones right here where they've gotten you one click, but only about 864 to 852, 792 even impressions, and their CTRs are less than 0.10 to 0.15. Now, this is a special area when it comes to actually looking at the metrics, simply because for products like these, you actually don't want to exclude them simply because I only like to exclude products which are not getting me one click 
every 500 impressions if it's not getting you one click every 500 impressions naturally it's going to have a less than 0.10 percent to 0.15 percent ctr so in this case it already got me one click by 500 impressions so i need another click so two clicks by 1000 impressions if it does not get me two clicks by 1000 impressions that is when i would go in and actually exclude that product however in this case since that is not the issue i would not look into excluding product like these but for all others that do match this criteria, you want to definitely go ahead and exclude them. So that is phase two of the step number one of excluding certain products with the new product section. Now you want to move to step number two because now the product section exclusions are done. We want to now move on to the keywords because we want to make sure our campaign is ranking for only the right keywords, not the bad ones. It's not spending money on any of those. So here's what we do. We want to come over the search term section and within the search term section, we want to set up a few filters. Filter number one, added slash excluded, it needs to equal none. And filter number two, impressions, needs to be greater than 300. Now, I put 333 in this case, but naturally, it needs to be above 300. Because again, with keywords, it's a little bit different than products. For one single product, you can be ranking from anywhere between 10 keywords all the way up to 100. So that's why the impressions number has to be a little bit generally lower just because of the sheer fact that there are mil thousands and thousands of keywords you could be ranking for within your Google Shopping campaign. So that's exactly what we're gonna do. And once we do that, now we look at the actual keywords to determine which keywords to completely kill. For keywords, we don't really like to be waiting until it reaches the profit margin because as I already mentioned, you could be ranking for thousands and thousands of keywords for just one individual product. So instead, here's what you do. You want to be waiting for those higher ticket products up to $20 spent to $25 spent for one single sale. For all other products which are lower ticket, $10 to $15 spent should be enough to let you know whether it is a good keyword or a bad keyword. And that is exactly what I follow by when it comes to excluding keywords based on the cost itself. So what you want to do is again, rank by most cost to least. Once you do that, select all of the keywords which do not match this criteria. For instance, this keyword right here is for a low ticket product, but it's already spent over $15, even over $25 and got me zero sales. So I'm going to go in and exclude that. This product right here, same thing here. This product is sort of a mid ticket item. So I would let it run for just about $2 more until it spends $20. But this is looking like a keyword that might not be good to rank for simply because of the very low CT and usually you'll see keywords have very very high ctrs in this case some keywords have low ctr so those we definitely know if we also look at the cost and it's not performing that it's a bad keyword but but we move on now and the third keyword right here this is for a very high ticket product so this is good enough and as you guys can see these keywords have not even spent up to what we wanted to spend so with keywords it's going to be a little bit more time to before you actually can go in and optimize your campaign but here's exactly how you add a keyword as a negative keyword you want to click this button right here which says add as negative keyword and then go ahead and select campaign from the drop down and click save and that is pretty much it you have now successfully excluded this keyword but that is phase one of step two which is excluding the keywords by based on the cost now once you have excluded all the keywords which are based on the cost we now go over to the ctr section we want to rank from lowest to highest and we want to repeat the same thing as we did before all keywords with less than 0.10 to 0.20% in this case, because usually if you rank the keywords from greatest to least, you'll be able to see that some keywords actually have very, very high CTR. So those keywords with very low CTRs actually are not ideal at all. You want to just completely get rid of them. So in this case, again, 0.10% to 0.20%. So these are all kinds of the keywords which are bad and not something we should have on our store. So we're going to do exactly that. I'll meet you guys again once I've selected all of the keywords which I need to exclude. So what I did is I went in and I chose all of the keywords which needs to be excluded because they do not match our criteria. And once you have done exactly that, you need to go on to phase three because with keywords, there are actually three phases of two step number two so when it comes to keywords you also need to be looking at those keywords which completely do not make sense at all because you might not be selling that product at all on your store so for instance there is a keyword here with a very low ctr and that keyword is the word dogs of course my shopify store i do not sell dogs so in this case i would need to immediately exclude that keyword regardless of what the ctr is regardless of how much money it spent if it was getting me sales or not because in general that is not a relevant keyword to what I'm selling at all so in cases like these it does not matter how much the keyword has spent how much the CTR is and so forth you need to get rid of these keywords immediately otherwise you're just going to keep on wasting money on a keyword which has nothing to do with any kinds of products that you sell on your so that is the second phase of excluding all of the keywords and again you want to
to go in here, choose campaigns and then scroll all the way down before hitting save to exclude all of these keywords successfully. And these are the two ways that I fully optimize my Google shopping campaign to ensure that it is fully optimized on a weekly basis. Now I say weekly because you do not want to be going in and optimizing your campaign every two days, every one day, even every three days and so forth. I recommend you wait seven to 14 days before making any of these changes and whatever day you choose to make all of these changes, make sure to do the product changes as as well as the search term changes all on the same day. You do not want to be doing these separately. I recommend doing it on the same day just to avoid making too many adjustments to your shopping campaign because when it comes to Google ads, you can actually hurt your campaign much more if you end up doing all of these optimizations unnecessarily. So these are the two great methods of optimizing your shopping campaigns in 2021 and onwards successfully. If you're looking to find more ways to optimize your campaign, because there's a lot of more detailed ways on how to optimize it, how to scale it and so forth. Again, I just recently released a course called the Google ads mastery course, which you can find the link for in the description. But if you guys found any type of value in this video, drop me a like subscribe if you haven't already and i'll see you guys next time